Hey everyone, it's your case and welcome to another Red Dragon Inc. unboxing. This is for set number six, The Villains. So if you're tired of playing as heroes and all the good guys, we can go check out what some of the villains are doing. Um, so we're going to have four new villains. This is actually the bartender in the back um, for set of the Red Dragon Inc. These guys are actually black. Uh, it's the black, black Depths Dungeon. Um, which is where they actually hang out and drink. So they play, they drink in a separate dungeon. Uh, but it's 100% compatible with all the other Red Dragon Inn characters. You can mix and match them. Um, it also adds a fun boss, uh, mode. So all the villains can be played as bosses. So you can actually play two, three, or, uh, two, three, or four players against a boss. Um, which uh, adds kind of a neat element to have extra cards to do that. Uh, but yeah, we're going to get introduced to four of the villain characters. Um, and then there are other expansions that add other villains in there as well. Um, which add a bunch of other various modes. Um, so we're going to hop in and look at this. So this is not a how to play or anything. I'm not going to go over any of those rules really. Um, check out Red Dragon 1 if you want to know more of that. Uh, we'll just go over a brief idea of the game. So each deck they'll have possible dragons on the low top. That means they're part of the boss deck. So, if you're just playing a regular game, um, don't include these in your deck. Uh, so, you should still have your regular um, deck size. Um, but then, if you want to play the boss version, you add them in. Um, so, they're nice and easy to tell apart. Um, although, it's just, the rule book is really nice. explains how to play. So, if you've never played, you can pick up any of these games and they'll explain how to play. Uh, and the concept of the game, if you didn't already know, is... You're playing in this one's villains, where those are normally your adventures, and you're drinking and gambling. And you're trying to do is not lose all your gold, because uh, then they kick you out of the inn, um, or the dungeon in this in this instance. Um, and you don't want your fortitude, which is your health, to go past your alcohol content. So if you lose too much health, or you get too drunk, and they eventually meet... Um, the same number, then you've passed out. Then you are also out of the game. Um, so some different variants in here we can look at. We'll look at Dungeon Events. is actually a new fun thing they added for this game as well. Um, there's a bunch of specific characters. How each of the characters work. Which I'll just go over as we look through them. Um, and then there's a big variant here on Team Variants. And how to play that. Which we'll go over that at the end. After we went through everyone's decks. Um... Lots of other different rules, playing two-headed dragons, boss battles, some different stuff like that. Bunch of card-specific notes. Uh, but we want to get into the nitty-gritty of all this. So first of all, we have components. We're going to get two uh, token sheets with gold. Uh, a lot of gold pass along. They're double-sided. Um, once you start owning multiple versions of this game, you don't probably need to keep every single one of them. Um, unless you want to make a little pile like on either side of the table if you're playing a four-player game. Just so care, uh, players can get to them easier. This is also going to add some potion tokens, which are for the team variants. Um, now, if you have one of the games that doesn't have this and you still want to play a team variant game, just use something to substitute it, but this adds nice little potions. There are some scarab tokens. These are for um, Amundur, the mummy. Um, there are some blood tokens for uh, Vazalo. Um, there's some Torg coins, these are special, uh, coins for him, um, because he starts the game with extra coins, this is for Torgo Snarf, one of the other characters, so he gets some extra coins that are specifically meant for him, uh, but you can use any of them. Then we have our little health and, um, fortitude counters just to keep track of stuff. They also give us beads to work with this as well. Um, so you can use either one depending on what you want. They have some doors uh, that work for the dungeon event deck. And then they have these big um, tokens. These green ones and red side. And these are for team modes just so that each player can keep track of who's taking their turn. Um, which we'll go over more of that when we get to it. Um, we're also going to get some baggies. Put your tokens in. We're going to get these big character boards. So every character before set number five um, just had generic boards. Set number five, the character trove added um, 
these special uh, personalized character uh, sheets for everybody. So if you have one of the earlier sets, picking up set number five, which also works as a storage box, um, will get you all these new ones. Anything afterwards, it all came with these. These are really nice because they have a picture of the character on them. They list your disc, deck and discard. Um, you have your counters on there, so you put your fortitude here, and as you lose health, it'll go down. Alcohol, as it goes up. Um, plus it lists your turn order. So we have, um, Darika the Mind Breaker. Then we have Targo Snop, Dunkle King. First of his name, he's a, um, Goblin King. Um, and then now on his, he has a, a special action in here. So on actions, he can use his minion card. So just list if he has a special thing happening. We have Baron Vong Vazilo. Um, so he has the same thing. Discard and draw, you may purchase cards after discarding. Um, and then on top he has his form decks, and here he has blood token supplies, so it's one of his special rules. And then we have Amangir the Cursed, who's an elf mummy. And she just has her scarab tokens kind of hang over on the side here. So it's also kind of needed, all the characters, if they have a special deck they need, um, they have it on the outside of their little board. Which is really cool. All right, we're gonna hop in and start looking at some of these characters. Um, the other thing you're gonna get are these deck dividers. So, if you just have this game, this, you can't use a deck divider in this box, but they have a spot to put them in there, so they're not just floating around. Uh, but if you have box number five um, or the smorgas box or anything else, you're gonna put your cards in where they're gonna stand up. These deck dividers are really nice. Um, then on the back side, they explain rules if they have any special rules. Now, she doesn't have any, so they're just going to have some information about her. Um, but if we look at someone like Amr the Curse, she's going to have this various setup and how her different tokens and stuff work. So they're nice little hints if they have an extra special feature, how they work. Um, some characters have extra decks and stuff like that, and some don't. So we just have... Uh, Degra the Mind Breaker, she's a Deep One Mentalist. What's also neat is these pictures look different for the villain characters than they do the heroes, just to help separate them a little bit better. Um, alright, so we're going to look at her main deck. Three, four, five, six. First thing we're going to do is look at the cards that every character has. Every character in every version of the game will have these cards, or very slight variations on them. So they'll have Gambling, I mean, which is an action gambling card. Starts your round of gambling, or lets you take control of a round of gambling. Um, she has six copies. She has two copies of I Raise. Uh, take control of a round of gambling. Each player, including you, must ante the gang. And two copies of Winning Hand. Take control of a round of gambling. The next card to take control must be a cheating card. Um, then we have two copies of Wench. Bring some drinks for these fiends. So in the Heroes version, any of the other ones, it says, uh, bring some drinks for my friends. This one just changes it to these fiends. Um, you may play this card during your order a drink phase. Pay one gold to the inn. Order two additional drinks. Uh, your drink may be placed in any other player's drink me piles. We also have the Wench thinks you should stop playing with the drinks. Negate is sometimes a card that changes the effects of the drink. This includes a negate, ignore, split drinks, pass drinks to another player, or alter any of a drink's effect. This card can only be affected by I don't think so. We have Tip the Wench. Uh, pick a player, they pay one gold to the ing. And then everyone has an I don't think so card. It's negates a sometimes card. Can only be affected by another I don't think so. Um, now a lot of the other cards in their decks might be very similar to each other or variations with just different names. Um, but there's a lot of different cards as well. So you should, I've been willing to break a mind or two. Picking other player, they lose two fortitude and discard a card from their hand at random. Ugh, random sucks. Uh, Psionic Vision, reveal the top five cards of your character deck. An opponent of your choice divides this card into two face-up piles. Place one pile into your hand, discard the other pile. No, this gold was mine all along. 
You may play this card when you are about to lose gold. Pick another player, they pay you one gold. You still lose one gold. That's funny. Um, this game is too easy. You may play this card when you must ante. Instead of anting, you may leave the round of gambling. Not now, I'm practicing. You may play this card when you must ante. Instead of anting, you may leave the round of gambling or ignore a drink. Um, you're thirsty, wouldn't you agree? Give the drink you are about to drink to another player. She has two copies of If I don't drink this, we'll all end up making bad decisions. Ignore a drink. Ink spray. Ignore an action, sometimes, or any time card that affects your fortitude, alcohol content, or gold. You may not use this card to ignore a round of gambling. Two copies of Just a Simple Case of Mind Over Matter. Ignore an action, sometimes, or any time card that affects your fortitude. Or, reduce the alcohol content of a drink you are about to drink by two. I think you should reconsider. Negate an action card. The player who played the card draws from their character deck. If it's another action phase, or if it's their action phase, they may play another action card. I just had a thought. Draw two cards from your character deck, then discard one card from your hand. You may not take any game actions between drawing and discarding. Ah, I can see straight again. Lose two alcohol content. Now I'll show you why I'm called the Mind Breaker. You may play this card immediately after you use Fortitude from a card played by another player. You may not play this card if you reduce the Fortitude loss. That player loses one fortitude and gains one alcohol content. These aren't the coins you're looking for. You mind trick the others. Uh, each other player pays you one gold. Two copies of, oh don't worry, this rarely leads to permanent damage. Pick another player, they gain two alcohol content, and you may you and that player each try a card from your character deck. <sighs> oh god, you startled me. Each other player loses one fortitude. Two copies of Stop Thinking So Loudly. I like that there's uh, the artwork, and there's characters from other sets in here too, so it's not just the villains. Um, pick another player, they lose two fortitude. Look at that player's hands. If this card is ignored, you still look at their hands. Um... My friend will play this hand for me. This is a cheating card for gambling. Pick another player who looked at their hand. You may discard a gambling or cheating card from it. If you do, take control of the wrong of gambling. If you don't, this card counts as though you pass. Oops, I got ink on my cards. Gain control wrong of gambling. Read minds during a game? I would never. Take control wrong of gambling. And... What's that up your sleeve? Take control around the gambling, pick another player, and force them to leave a round of gambling. So she has some fun cards. Lots of stuff with, uh, it's like messing with players' hands, things like that. Then she's going to have a second deck here. It's got the same backs on it, nothing different there, but it's got the little dragons in the top. So this is if you're playing, um, boss mode. So she's going to add these to her deck, and then. She'll have a bigger deck to use if you're playing against two or two or three players. Um, just as a fun little card that every character in this deck has one of these. First rule of villainy cards. Hers is Brains Over Brawn. Each other player discards a sometimes card from their hand unless they reveal a hand with no sometimes card. Each other player loses one fortitude. This card can't be negated. So now these cards are a lot more powerful because they hit multiple players because you're supposed to be attacking the other team. Um, and they're pretty abusive. But again, you're, you have to remember, you're playing one versus three. So you have one set of options. They have three different options to counter your stuff. Um, how chivalrous of you. You may play this card immediately after you become your team's champion. Pick another player who isn't a team's champion. That player acts as your team's champion instead. If you are unable to pick a player who isn't already a team champion, then your team has no champion. Um, so basically what the champion rule is, is for boss mode. When you're playing, or any any team mode, 
So if you're playing any team that has multiple players, um, when it comes to a thing where you have to make a choice where you'd be competing against each other, such as a round of gambling, um, or anything like that, where it's saying it, where it's you have to play against each other on the team, um, like maybe a drinking event where you have multiple people each playing, you choose one player to be that champion, so they're doing the action for the other team. So it becomes Team A versus Team B versus, you know, the three players on one team basically wasting cards against each other trying to win. Um, and this is just saying that if you do that, then so if, uh, if team, team Hero is playing against the boss, have um, three players and they pick player A to be their champion, you can pick player B or C to be your champion to fight against them instead of you playing cards. Um, two copies. Uh, my mother gave me stronger tankers when I was a baby. Ignore a drink. If this card would be negated, it is instead halves all drink and numeric effects rounded down. Two copies of You Might Need a Sanity Check after this. Pick another player, they lose two fortitude. Gain two alcohol content and play with their hands revealed until your next turn. Draw a card from your character deck for each opponent. You have up to a maximum of four cards. Two copies of My What Selfish Adventures You Are. You may pick it, play a card when you are picked to take an effect from an action card. Pick another player other than the player who played the action card to take the effects instead of you. There's only one, one other player in the game. Ignore that action card instead. Two copies of Oh Look You Brought Some Help. Pick another player, they lose two fortitude. Look at that player's hand. You may discard an action card from it. If you do, then a different player of your choice loses three fortitude. Um, and then she has a bunch of duplicate cards from her regular set. She says, I've been willing to break a mind or two. I don't think so. My friend will play this hand for me. I think you should reconsider. And Cyan Vision, basically just doubling up on some of them cards she only had one of in the first set. Alright. So that is how she works. Up next, we are going to look at Cargo Snarf Dunkle King. Um, so there is his, the first of his name, he's the Goblin King. Um, so move his dungeon, or boss stuff. So on the back of his... He has a couple of things. He begins with two additional gold, which, again, you can be then special ones with his name on, or if you don't have them or have misplaced them for some reason, any two gold will work. Um, minions. Some of Cargo Snap's action cards are minions. You may play one of these in front of you as an action card for the turn. Some minions have ongoing effects. Others allow you to take uh, special actions once per action phase. Um, if you have the action one, you can play them uh, whenever you, during your phase, either before or after you play your action cards. And then wages. Each minion has a number of specifies in its wages. Whenever a player plays another, whenever a player other than Cargo Snap must choose a player for a fortify, fortitude loss or redirection effect, they may target a minion. Um, and then if you want to keep them, either you discard them or you pay that wage. So we'll see that when we get to a minion. One, two, three, four. So he's got six copies of I'm Gambling, I'm In, two I Raises, two Winging Hands. Um, the Wench thinks you should stop playing with her drinks. Um, here's a special version of this one. It says two copies of Wench, bring us one of everything. You may play this when, during your order of drink phase. Pay one gold to the order of three additional drinks. Usually... It's, they uh, only bring two. And then he's got, we don't think so, which is a different version of, I don't think so. So it's negative sometimes card. We don't think so can only be affected by cards in effect, I don't think so. And we don't think so can affect any card that can be affected by, I don't think so. Uh, it's kind of funny that they include the extra rules, but uh, there's a few other characters that have this, where they have other characters with them. So it's called, we don't think so as a team. Um, which is effectively the same thing. Um, so right off the bat, we're going to look at his uh, his minions. So he has Crawl the Cupbearer. So this is action minion. Wages 3. So if he gets targeted to lose any fortitude, 1, 
five, it doesn't matter. Um, either you discard him or you have to pay three gold. If you pay three gold, he stays around. If you don't, you can get rid of him. Uh, when you would gain alcohol content from a drink, that drink is reduced by one. Um, and now that gold, you can choose to pay it. Even if you have 20 gold, you do not have to pay their wages. Uh, Bricks the Enforcer. Wages two, and during each of your action phases, you may pick another player. They lose two fortitude. And Grunt the Brawler. Um, same thing, wages two. During each year. Action phases, you may pick another player, they lose two fortitude. Uh, what am I paying you for? Digging here. Uh, pay one gold to the end, reveal a card from the top of your character deck until you reveal a minging. Put that minging into play, shuffle the other, reveal cards back into your character deck. Two copies of How About a Friendly Game of Cards. Start a round of gambling. This card may not be negated. Players may not. Play cards to avoid or voluntarily leave this round of gambling. Players may play cards that cause other players to leave. This card may not be used to take control of a round of gambling in which is already underway. You don't need a winning hand when you have enough goons. You may play this card anytime during a round of gambling. Uh, even if you have left the round, you may not play this card if the round is already ended. You may not play it in response to a card that would Make players anti or would end the round when it resolves. The round ends, you get the anti gold. It does not count as you winning. Uh, let's make this game more interesting. You may play this card immediately after you win a round of gambling. You may not play this card if you've already left the round. The round continues, the pot stays, and each player still in the each player still in the round, including you must anti again. If you're currently winning, the round continues to your left. So you got a bunch of gambling cards here. Um, what's that up your sleeve? Take control of a round of gambling. Pick another player and force them to leave a round of gambling. Um, I hire my cleric from the Shady Healers Guild. Pay one gold to the inn and gain two fortitude. Or pay two gold to the inn to gain four fortitude. I'll have the lunch bring you something special. Pick another player, they drink the top card of the drink deck, pay the gold one pay one gold to the ing. Actually it does have my name on it. Pick another player, they pay you one gold. Gain one gold from the ing. This is reference to them gold stamp ones. Um I'm busy counting my pocket change. You may play this card when you must ante. Instead of anting, you leave the wrong of gambling or ignore a drink. This drink is not worthy of a king. Ignore a drink. I have a cup bearer for this sort of thing. Pay one gold to the ing and reduce the alcohol content of a drink you are about to drink by two. Or pay two gold to the ing and reduce the alcohol content of a drink you are about to drink to four. Um. I bet you can't chug this whole thing. Give a drink you are about to drink to another player. Add the effects. Torgo Snarf pays you one gold to that drink. Uh, two copies of Quick Run Away. You know, an action, sometimes, or anytime card that affects your fortitude, alcohol content, or gold. You may not use this card to ignore a round of gambling. Meat Shield. The best defense money you can buy. You may play this card when an action, sometimes, or anytime card would affect your fortitude or a minion's fortitude. Pay one gold to the ing. You and your minions ignore the card. Not in the face. Someone else's face. You may play this card when a player would make you lose fortitude. Pay that player one gold. The damage is redirected to a different player of your choice. Uh, there. If there's only one other player in the game, ignore an action sometimes or any time card that affects your fortitude. You still pay them. All the violence money you can buy. You may play this card immediately after you use fortitude from a card played by another player. You may not play it if you reduce the fortitude loss. That player loses one fortitude or that player loses three fortitude and you pay the gold one in. I can pay, don't worry. Who's worried? I'm not worried. Pay gold, 
Gain gold from the game equal to the number of players currently in the game, including you. If you play this card during an action phase, you may play another action card. Two copies of that's some nice gold you got there. Pick up the three players, they each lose one fortitude and pay you one gold. And finally, watch out, I drop my crossbow. Pick another player to lose one fortitude. So he's got a lot of gambling and cheating stuff, plus he gets a lot of gold to play with. Um, then he'll have his uh, boss deck. So we'll start off with a couple that are the same ones in his regular. This strength is not worthy of a king. I have a cup bear for this sort of thing. Lynch bring us one of everything. Another, we don't think so. And he has his new ones. He has first roll of villainy, hire a troll. Each other player discards a sometimes card from their hand unless they reveal a card hand with no sometimes card. Each other player loses one fort fortitude. This card can't be negated or ignored. Um, hold them back. I'm taking care of this one personally. Pick another player, they lose 3 Fortitude. If they lose Fortitude this way, then the rest of your turn, that player's teammates cannot play sometimes or anytime cards. We get two more copies of Meat Shield, the best defense money can buy. We have two copies of Discount Elixir of Haggling, which is surprisingly not listed as a drink card. Um, play this card in front of you while it doesn't play, the ink pays the first gold piece of any gold payment you make. Just start this card at the beginning of your next turn. Multiple copies of this card are redundant. So if you have two of them out, it doesn't, second one doesn't count. Two copies of I brought my own brute squad. Picking other player, they lose X fortitude and pay you X gold. For X is the number of minions you have in play. And it says, wait, get back here. I need you. I have gold. Pay one gold to the end, return a minion from a discard pile to play. And then we get two more minions. We have General Drog, uh, wages of three. Once during each year action phases, you may pick another player. They lose one four to two for each player on their team. And Augur the Augur, wages one. When Ogre comes into play, draw a card from your character deck. Your hand size is increased by one. Alright, so that was our Goblin King. Uh, Cargo Snarf, Dunkle King. Alright. Alright, our third villain is Amangar, the Cursed, the Elf Mummy. Um, so she has a fun mechanic with these Scarab Tokens. So, we did see those before. So she's going to have a bunch of different ones. There's uh, different colors. There's like some brown ones, some blue ones, some green ones. They all do the same thing. They just want to give you different designs, which I like. They would just all been the same one scarab token. You know, it would have been perfectly okay as well. Um, but the fact that you have a bunch of different ones makes it a little bit neater. It takes 12 scarab tokens. Um, many of our cards give, give players scarab tokens. A player that receives one must keep them visible. Uh, at the end of a player's turn, if that player has one or more Scarab token and isn't Amangarar Amand herself, they return one Scarab token to her and lose one Fortitude. Uh, they may reduce this, though as it came from an action card, they may not hit back cards after taking Scarab damage, however. If that player reduces or ignores its Scarab damage, the player still returns one of their Scarab tokens. So every turn, if they have one, they get rid of it, they lose Fortitude. They can play cards that stop it, but they can't play something that says if they cook damage, then they do this. They could ignore it or reduce it, but they can't attack you afterwards. Four, five, six. So she's got her six copies of Gambling I'm In. Two I Raise. Two Winning Hands. Wench. Things you stop playing with the drinks. Tip the Wench. One copy of Wench. Bring, bring some drinks for these fiends. And her I don't think so card. And then we have sharing is caring. Uh, split a drink you are about to drink with another player. Uh, their half of the drink also gains the effect of gaining two scarabs. Now they put it that way because if now the effect of that drink, now if they have something that ignores that drink, 
then they don't get them scared. So they're not just gaining them because they only gain them if they still take that drink. Um, two copies of Can't You See I'm Feeding My Precious Little Nibblers. Uh, you may play this round when you are must ante. Instead of ante, you may leave the round of gambling or pick another, and then pick another player they gain one scarab. Two copies of Sorry About the Mess. Uh, pay one gold to the ing, ignore a drink. Pick another player, they gain one scarab. I'm sending this back, there's a bug in it. Ignore a drink, another player, pick another player, they gain a scarab. I'm busy sorting my external organs. You may play this card when you must ante instead of ante, uh, leave the wrong of gambling, or ignore a drink. In either case, pick another player to gain a scarab. Two copies of, I suppose these Tomb Raiders are good for something. You may play this when you're about to lose gold. Use gold from the Aang rather than from your own stash. Um, so this is a funny little gimmick with her. Um, cause she's undead, she doesn't take damage really. So she has, you knocked off my hat. You may play this card immediately after you sport it to from a card played by another player. You may not play this card if you reduce it at fortitude loss. Um, that player gains two scarabs. Uh, she has an arrow in the side of her head. And then she has two copies of Are You Done Now? She has a bunch of knives and arrows and axes in her. You may play this card when in action. Sometimes your anytime card would make you lose fortitude. Reduce that fortitude loss by two. Two copies of Oh, that happened. Someone just jabbed your sword through her. Uh, you may play this anytime in action. Sometimes your anytime card makes you lose fortitude. Reduce that fortitude loss to one. The player who played the card gains one scarab. You dare cheat a pharaoh. Um, I hope this is a hand, hand drawn card. Uh, you may play this card when another player plays a cheating card. You may not play if you already left the wrong of gambling. You get the cheating card, you win the wrong of gambling. Player who would play the cheating card gains two scarabs. My babies are excellent scavengers. Your scarabs pickpocket the others. Each player pays you one gold and gains one scarab. Two copies of. Have you seen my spleen? I left it in a mug right here. Pick another player, they lose two fortitude, gain a scarab. Two copies of Keep Your Hands Off My Antiques. Pick another player, they lose one fortitude, gain one scarab. Two copies of Yep, that growth on your arm is definitely mummy rot. Uh, which is a good reference to, I think it's set one or two, is one of the drinks say something about uh, healing mummy rot. Uh, pick another player, they lose two fortitude. Achoo! Her eyeball popped out. Um, pick another player, lose one fortitude, gain one scarab. As I can see, you've met Itsy and Bitsy. Pick another player, they lose one fortitude, gain two scarabs. Don't mind the scarabs, they're just exploring. Pick another player, they lose fortitude for each scarab they have up to a maximum of four. If they lose fortitude this way, they return that many scarabs to Amandrar. Um, we'll deal this round a cheating card. Uh, take control of a round of gambling, each other player in the round gains one scarab, and we'll take those. Uh, each other player in this round or you may play this during a order a drink phase before you order any drinks. Pay one gold to the ink, order two additional drinks. Each player you give, you must give at least one drink during this phase. Also gains one scarab. Uh, yeah, so she's very interesting. She has, basically, she's all about fortitude loss. She's going to just knock your health down. She's not as worried about getting you drunk or winning gambling or any of that stuff. Then her boss cards. So... We have Sorry About the Mess. Um, just trying to find the ones that were. She actually doesn't have a lot of different ones. She has, and she has, I don't think so. And I think all the rest of hers are new. And she actually has a really neat thing here. Is she has two copies of I Am Unstoppable. Which now she doesn't look like a mummy anymore. She's kind of like rejuvenated herself. She's not all dying. Uh, which is really cool. Uh, basically, the boss cards are supposed to be their overpowered versions. 
So ignore an action, sometimes or anytime card that affects your fortitude, alcohol, content, or gold. Or ignore a drink. In either case, if this card is negated, gain one fortitude, lose one alcohol content, and gain one gold from the aim. The alternate effect may not be altered or negated. I will be your doom. You may play this card immediately after you lose fortitude from a card played by another player. You may not play this if you reduce that fortitude loss. The player loses 3 fortitude and gains 3 scarabs. Two copies of Eat Up My Pretties We Don't Have All Night. Each other player with one or more scarab loses one fortitude. Each player loses fortitude this way returns one scarab to Amangar. Draw two cards from your character deck. I think this. I think I was involved in this stuff. You may play this card after a player reveals a drink with possible chases. Instead of its usual effects, the drink has gained two fortitude. Any non-drink cards that change this drink effect still apply normally. This card is negated. Gain three fortitude. Uh, the alternate effect may not be altered or negated. Her first rule of villainy: lower their defenses. Um, each other player discards a sometimes card from their hand, unless they reveal a hand with no sometimes card. Each other player loses one fortitude. Each other player pick a player, they gain one scarab. It cannot be negated or ignored. Two copies of Hungry Hungry Scarabs. Each other player loses one fortitude. If one or more player ignores this card, pick a player, they gain two scarabs. This additional effect may not be altered, negated, or ignored. Draw two cards from your character deck. Two copies of You're in a Big of a Bind. Pick another player, they lose three fortitude. This card is ignored, they gain one stare instead. Draw two cards from your character deck. And then finally, we have two copies of Bewildering Bugs. Take control of a round of gambling. Pick another player, they pay you one gold and gain one scarab. Now, there's only 12 scarabs in her pile. If you don't have any, she can't play any. So you somehow pass out all 12 and it asks you to pay more. Um, you can't give any more away. Uh, which I don't know if you ever get all 12 of them out. I'd say you're doing very well. Alright, so here's Amangar the Cursed. Alright, now let's get to our last villain who has a very interesting and unique deck. Baron von Vlazogo. So he's our vampire. So he's got a little bit different deck than everybody else. So everyone usually has um, a deck of a certain size. Uh, no matter what. Even if they have a side deck. He has a smaller deck because he has two form decks that he changes into. So he is normally a human vampire. Shown by his cool hat, gloves, and cane. He can also become a vampire werewolf. Uh, which has two blood tokens on the side. So that's how much it costs to purchase one of these cards. He also has a vampire bat. Um, so basically the way his works is. You shuffle your eight card wolf deck. Eight card back deck. Placing your, your deck. Then draw a card from either deck. And then draw six more cards for a total of your normal seven. Um, and then some cards give him blood tokens. When you gain blood tokens, you put them near your play, your play mat. During your drawing discard phase, after you discard, be but before you draw, you may purchase cards from your blood tokens for two each. If you do, put them into your hand. So basically what you're doing is you're going to make your deck bigger by, by purchasing and adding more cards. So I think... He starts, I think everyone in the like a 40 card deck. I think he starts with like a 35 card deck. Um, because you're constantly buying and adding cards. Um, so it does specify there. You may purchase cards after discarding. But they go right to your hand. So then you get these cards and then they become part of your deck from that. So you don't have to reshuffle your deck. Um, you still get them cards. You never have to rebuy them. And that says a few of his cards require you to spend blood tokens to play them. If you don't have enough blood tokens, you may not play the card. If you spend blood tokens this way and it gets negated, ignored, you do not get a refund. So, alright, we're going to look at his regular deck first. So, one, two, three, four, five. He has five copies of Gambling I'm In, one copy of I Raise, and then this is what is crazy. He's a vampire. So, he has 
Zinging Hang. Um, so he has two copies of that. He has two copies of Thanks. Bring some drinks for these fiends. The Vanks thinks you should stop playing with the drinks. And keep the wench. And I don't think so. Says, uh, I, the I don't think so effect can only be a card that effect I don't, I don't think so. And I don't think so can only be affect by cards I don't think so. I like that they still have to put that little reminder text that they just figured people wouldn't get it. Um, Alright, so then he has a bunch of other cards. So he's going to have Come to Me, Children of the Night. So it's picking another player, they lose one fortitude. Draw one card from your character deck. If you play this card during your action phase, you may play another Come to Me, Children of the Night from your hand in this phase. It gets you two blood tokens. Um, so he's got two copies of I only want to sip. I've already had my fill. Reduce the alcohol content of the drink you're about to drink by two and gain two blood tokens. Two copies of It will take more than that to defeat a vampire. So I love that all his other ones are V's. Um, his W's are V's, but his W his V then becomes a W. Uh, you may play this card when in action, sometimes during the same card, would make you lose fortitude. Reduce that fortitude loss by one. Two copies of the stakes are too high. I am out. You may play this card when you must ante. Instead of anting, you may leave the round of gambling. Two copies of don't worry. It's I just took a nibble. Pick another player. They lose one fortitude. Gain one fortitude. If that player alcohol content is ten or greater, you also gain one alcohol. Just fine. So if they're super drunk, you become a little drunker. Two copies of looking to my eyes. Picking other player, they gain one alcohol content. Oh no, look what happened to my cards. Take control a round of gambling. It's got blood all over them. Um, blood is thicker than vine. This card costs one blood to play. It loses two alcohol content. Two copies of this drink is a fangatastic. Split a drink. You are about to drink in half. You take half the drink's effect, round it down. The other half of the drink does not go to another player. Reveal the drink first. That's actually, I don't have ever seen another card that's done that. Um, it might. I might just not remember it, but. Um, Twilight Shapeshifter. Draw a card from either your wolf deck or your bat deck. You do not need to pay blood tokens for it. And his final regular card is. I am not a evil old man. This card costs one blood to play. Pick another player, they lose three fortitude. She's got some definitely interesting stuff. Then if we look at his back cards, which I love it. His back has a little vest on, and he has a hat, and he still has his mustache. Or it's just his mouth, sorry. Looks like a mustache. Alright, so he has... This tankard is too big. Reduce the alcohol content of a drink you're about to drink by three. You won't collect me thing. Take control a wrong of gambling, picking other player and force them to leave the wrong of gambling. What? This gold? Va it was behind your ear. Uh, pick another player, they pay you one gold. Draw a card from your character deck. Batnap. Which... I'm going to zoom up on this one. So, I don't know if you can see, but he's hanging out in the back up here. Um, upside down in the cave. Uh, your turn ends now. Do not order a drink. Until the beginning of your next turn, you may not pick play cards and are all effects, and players may not pick you when card effects ask them to. Players can only order you drink. If the drink is reshuffled, you must still pay. You may not participate in gambling or buy potions. Uh... Behold, my wonderful acrobatics. Ah, ah, ah. You impress the others. Each other player pays you one gold. He's got two copies of Fly Away. 
Ignoring action, sometimes your anger can cards that affect your fortune, alcohol, content, or gold. You may not use this card during our round of gambling. And then he has another copy of Come to Me, Children of the Night. Pick another player, they lose one fortitude, draw a card from your character deck. If you play this card during your action phase, you may play another Come to Me, Children of the Night from your hand to this phase. So basically, you start with this card in your regular deck. If you play it, you can purchase more. Now, you'll also notice he does have a couple more that still draw him more blood as well. So even when he becomes a bat um, or a wolf, he can still um, get you more blood to play your other cards or buy more cards. It is unadvised to strike a hungry wolf. Um, you may play this card immediately after you use Fortitude from a card you play by another player. You may not if you reduce that Fortitude. That player loses 3 Fortitude. Two copies of Won't You Join Me For Dinner? Pick another card. They lose two. They lose three fortitude. Uh, another thing just to kind of point out. So you can kind of see the watermark of the, of the wolf back there. Um, so you can also see it in some of these cards too. They're the little watermark of the back. Just kind of interesting that they did that. A little, little nod. Just nice thing. Um. So pick another player that was three fortitude. Two copies of My Bike is First in My Bark. You may pick another player that was three fortitude. Cards that would ignore a fortitude cost instead reduced by two. It's wound looking time. Gain one fortitude, draw a card from your character deck. I'm talking with my dinner desk. Um, you may play this card when you must ante. Instead of anking, leave the run of gambling or ignore a drink. And then another, come to me, children of the night. So now I think a point out though, again, is the, the bat and the wolf have different bats. So they'll get mixed into your deck, um, but players will always be able to see if you have some of them in your hand or not. Um, then we have his dungeon cards. So we have an I don't think so. Um, I am not a evil old man. Now, his dungeon one only gains five cards. So, normally they have 15 cards for their deck. Um, each each, match, each uh, boss has like 15 cards. He gets five cards to his regular deck. So, he gets those two. He gets no. Uh, no. So, because he gets these, uh, it's extra powerful for him. This card costs two blood to play. You gain action card. This card cannot be negated. His first rule of villainy, never fight on an empty stomach. Each player discards sometimes card from their hand, unless they reveal a hand with no sometimes cards. Each other player loses one fortitude. This card can't be negated. And Bearing of the Twilight Realm, gain one fortitude. Uh, draw a card from your character deck. Draw a card from either your wolf deck, bat deck, or monstrosity deck. So it's the first mention of that. So he gains, for his boss cards, he gains a brand new deck of eight cards. Vampire Monstrosity. So this works just like the other two. Um, and it starts out regular when you're playing boss. You can access it right away. Um, no one can help you now. Pick another player. They lose four fortitude. That player's teammates may not play cards to reduce or ignore the re redirect fortitude. You can kind of see that symbol in the back. Two copies of Vot, am I too fast for you? Pick another player, they lose two fortitude. If you play this card during your action phase, you may play another action card. Uh, two copies of I am invis invincible. You may ignore an action sometimes or anytime card that affects your co or two or alcohol content or ignore a drink. Um, two copies of Ah ha ha, I will destroy you all. Gain one fortitude, lose one alcohol content, and draw a card from your character deck. And then finally, he has another Come to Me, Children of the Night. So he gets four of them total. Um, so you can actually pile those on very high if you, have a, if you get, get all four of them. Alright, so that's a definitely interesting. Uh, deck way he has. He's the only character that I know of 
um, as of this point, not having every character in the game, uh, that has a main deck that is less than the normal. Otherwise, everyone else normally has the same main deck, they just have a side deck that they sometimes draw cards from. Um, but even most of them, they draw it, that card does something, and then it goes away, or it sits in a spe special pile, um, or sits on the board somewhere, and it does something and leaves. His is also the only one that you add all them cards actively keep adding them to his deck and making his deck bigger so it's definitely two interesting different things that he does um all right so now we're gonna look at the drink deck and the event dungeon events all right so we're gonna get our divider for drink deck number six i want for every deck here's the back in case you want to see what they are so this does bring up the first um variant that you can play um which we'll is called a drink deck variant. So every drink deck has 30 cards. Um, I'm not going to pull up the book to show us. I'm just going to explain it quick. So you play a game, you always want to play 30 drink cards. If you have multiple sets, you're going to have multiple drink decks. So what you could do is you could always play one drink deck. When it runs out, you pay the gold, grab another deck. Or the variant is you can mix all the decks together, draw 30 cards off the top. Then when it runs out, you pay the gold one in. Um... And then you can draw the next 30 cards. If you have more than that, you can keep going. If you have, like, this is set number 6. If you have, like, 6 decks and you bought 1 for every set. You could go ahead and mix and match and take out cards you do or don't want. Like, maybe you want more cards with chases. Maybe you want less cards with chases. Maybe you don't want any cards that sober you up. Like, nope, we're not going to play it. We're going to make it a little bit harder. Maybe you want to get rid of cards that have abilities because you're playing with new players. So you only want cards that up or down your uh, health and fortitude and you don't want extra stuff. Again, maybe get rid of chases for that reason. Um, so you could build your own card of 30 card decks. Except you do want to have some of the event cards in there. Most decks have somewhere between 3 and 5 event cards. So I would probably say even if you're going to shuffle everything together... You might want to like set the event card separate, shuffle them in a different pile. Then when you build your first 30 card deck, like make it 26, 27 cards, then add the remaining event cards. Um, if you don't, you just might end up, if you have two decks and you shuffle them together and draw them, you might end up with all your event cards in one deck and none in the other deck, which can make one deck easier or harder than the other. Uh, but that's just my personal suggestion on the events. Alright, so let's look at what we have here. So, we're going to start with some of the ones that have been in other sets, and then we'll kind of get to some of the newer ones. So we have Orcish Rot Gut. Um, and the flavor text on the funny is pretty, is, on the bottom is pretty funny. Your stomach will hate you for days. We have the Ogre Brew, or as the Ogres call it, Brew. Uh, Dragon Breath Ale. Wine. Wine with Chaser. We have a coffee for sobering up. Water. This does nothing. Light ale. Light ale with Chaser. Dark ale. Dark ale with Chaser. Um, the Dwarven Firewater. Elven Wine. Elven Wine with Chaser. Um... Ale of Intrigue. So these are, might be some of the ones that might not have, aren't, aren't in most sets. Uh, draw two cards from your character deck. Uh, Wizard's Bane with a Chaser. Um, you see colors, the room spins, this stuff is terrible. Uh, so I think we've had like Wizard's Wine before and Wizard's Brew, but not Wizard's Bane. Uh, we have quote unquote Tomato Juice. If you're a vampire, um, instead, you don't stop losing too healthy, you gain too alcohol. A bloody good drink. Um, the dungeon runoff. Minus one health. You don't want to know where it came from. Evil spirits. Evil spirits, pretty sang, make me nice and drunk again. Uh, it's funny. And then we have Angel, Angel Tears. A selfie cell with celestial sadness. There's a neat look. Some of these are just neat looking bottles. I have to say it that much at least. Uh, Sentient Ooze with a Chaser. Uh, this card 
If this card gets your chaser because the one is not available or a drink event was revealed, minus two fortitude. If you aren't careful, it drinks you. A gelatinous cube shot. Uh, instead of a jello shot. It's hilarious. Uh, it jiggles all the way down. Um, Ale is from the crypt. A time to dust off the old stock. A deep one drop. You go mad from our new recipe. The uh, Savilong Belch. Uh, if it was not the result of a drink event or a chase, you may split it with another player. Uh, it cannot be affected by a, any other card that splits a drink. It's so bad you have to share. Troll Swill. Um, the trick is drinking around the eyeball. So you gain difference if you're a troll. Uh, and then we have some event cards. So event cards work a little bit differently. We have two copies of Drinking Event. Uh, each player reveals a card from the drink deck and drinks it. The player who reveals the drink with the highest alcohol content, even if they avoid the effects, wins one gold from each other player. If there's a tie, the players who tie reveal and drink again till there is a winner. Uh, the effects of the drink event cards are ignored and they count as zero alcohol content. Um, and then we have the Wench Dare Zoo. Reveal two drink cards with possible chasers from the drink deck. If you reveal a drink of deck, there's one reveal it. Discard and reveal again. Uh, you drink the drink with the higher alcohol content. Each other player drinks a copy of the other drink. The drinks have the same alcohol content. You choose which one to drink. Um, so they could have different effects. And then finally, a Toast to Villainy. Uh, reveal a drink with possible chasers from the drink deck. If you reveal an event drink, before revealing a drink, discard or reveal again. Each player, including you, drinks a copy of the revealed drink. Um, so this is just a different wording of um, a different one from the Heroes deck. But yeah, it's still definitely fun. Now the thing is, like right there, every deck has two copies of drinking contests. So if you're going to start mixing a bunch together... You might want, again, that's why you might want to pull some of the events out. It's all saying if you got, let's say if you mix four sets together, you wouldn't want to accidentally get like six or eight of these all mixed in together. Um, otherwise, it's going to make that maybe not as fun. Maybe it'll make it more exciting. It just kind of depends. Um, so before I check the events, we do have another divider card. We have promo drinks. Now, there wasn't any in this set, but there have been some in other sets or you get them from uh, other various things. So, they just added a divider in here. It's kind of weird that that didn't come with the uh, set 5. Um, but that's alright. Then, the last thing we have are these big, giant door deck cards. Uh, so, these are dungeon events. So, like, compared to a regular size card, it's just a little bit over... The size of two cards. Or just a little, little under. Just about the size of two cards. Um, yeah, so to play these is actually you play them face down. You draw one up. And then let's actually just look at the book so I read these rules correctly. Alright, so here's a dungeon event. Um... So you can use it for whatever. So this is the Black Dungeon Depths. Um, at the start of the game, you decide whether you want to play with it or not. Um, you can use it with any any combination. You don't have to use it with just the villains. Um, shuffle a deck and place two dungeon place two dungeon event progress counters on it. So there's a little door counters that we saw at the beginning of the video. Uh, leave a space next to the deck for discard pile. If you ever run out, reshuffle and start it over. Um, at the end of each player's turn, remove a progress counter from the dungeon event. Uh, remove, when you remove the last progress counter, reveal the top card of the dungeon event. Follow the instructions after this place number of progress counters onto the event equal to the revealed card. So this, you start with two, and after two turns, you'll reveal one. Then depending on the effect of the next card, then depending on how many progress counters are, you put that many on there. Um, dungeon effects affect all players. Uh, if ever requires them to make a choice or made in turn order, um, give you the option of taking an action you can't take. You may not choose that option. So, for example, if you have fewer than three cards in your hand, you may not choose to discard to drink, meet your doom. Um, 
So if it says to discard four cards, example. Um, some cards refer to heroes and villains. Um, just you know who is who. Basically, if they're a villain character, the villain, all their characters are heroes, if not specified. Um, yeah. So some interaction with other cards or some more rules here, like names of communicated and stuff like that. Or play with the sea events from Red Dragon Inc. 4. Basically, you can play both of them. Just lots of stuff are going to keep happening back and forth. Uh, so that is the basis there. Alright, so let's look at what we have. We have a contest of wills. So this has three progress counters. It would go on it. And again, the progress counters are going to be these doors. Just to keep track of those. Um, so in turn order, each player must bid in mode of alcohol content higher than the last bid or pass. This continues until players bid and everyone else passes. The winning bidder gains that much alcohol content then draws from the character deck and they have nine cards in their hand. Drinks with friends. Um, reveal a drink with possible chases from the drink deck. If you reveal a drink at deck, before reveal a drink, discard reveal again. Each player drinks a copy of the revealed drink. Effects that when you gate, ignore, or one of those copy drinks instead reduces the alcohol content by two. Uh, who like all the cobalt ding? In, in turn order, each player must choose one. Discard the top card of your drinking pile or lose two alcohol content. Uh, we have two copies of Wraithful Revenants. Each player loses two fortitude. Players may reduce or ignore this fortitude as though it came from an action card. A costly cure. Each player secretly chooses any amount of gold from their stash. The amount can be zero. Players reveal their choices simultaneously. Each player that chooses the highest amount of gold pays the gold to the aim, loses three alcohol content. Cards which avoid or paying gold from the aim can only avoid avoid one gold per card played. Uh, the price of power. Um, in current order, each player must bid the amount of fortitude higher than the last bid, so same thing. Um, the winning bidder loses that much fortitude, then gains two gold from the end. Orders a drink, discards any number of cards in their hand, and refills their hand size from their character deck. We got two copies of Blood Money, I'm In. Beginning, beginning a round of gambling as though the current player had played Gambling, I'm In. During this round, whenever a player must ante, the player must instead lose one fortitude for each gold they would ante. If they do, their ante comes from the inn instead of their own stash. Drink or meet your doom. In turn order, each player must discard three cards from their hand. Then each player who didn't discard Cards reveals a drink from the drink deck and drinks it. The player reveals a drink event before revealing a drink, discards it, and reveals it again. If you have fewer than three cards in your hand, you must drink. Feats of Villainy. Choose a hero to lose one fortitude. Each villain gains one alcohol content. Um, and then we have uh, Feats of Heroism. Uh, each villain loses one fortitude. Each hero gains one alcohol content. Staring contest. In turn order, each player chooses one. Pay one gold to the end and lose two alcohol content. Or, till your next turn, you can't play cards and you ignore all action cards. And we get three copies of Everything's Fine for now. No effect. Two copies of Rat Swarm. Each player loses one fortitude. Players may reduce, ignore this fortitude cost so it came from an action card. Leftover loot. Uh, in turn order, each player decides if they want to help open the locked chest. After all players have decided, flip a coin. Then players who help open the chest to find. Heads. Pile of loot. Each player who helped gains two gold from the end. Or tails. It's a trap. Each player who loses two fortitude and gains one gold from the end. And then our last one is Caven. Um, each player pays one gold to the end and discards the top card of the drink me pile as they scramble to safety. So those are our dungeon cards. Alright, I don't think there's anything else. I kind of went over the uh, 
I'm gonna kind of go over the team variant really quick. <clears throat> so we have the team variant mode, which um, several team variants. So the general rule is wrong. Shared fortitude, alcohol content, and gold. A team has shared fortitude, alcohol, and gold. Each player may have their own play mat if they like, but only one team per player tracks their stuff. So they begin with 20 and they go to zero. So you just need one map, but you can keep it if you have like your specific piles of cards you want to keep, keep, keep track of. Um, potion tokens. Start with potion tokens based on number of players, but spending a token at any time, either gain six fortitude, lose six alcohol content, or gain three gold. They have shared defense, so they can, basically, you can play cards uh, to help another player. So if someone else is gonna lose gold or lose fortitude, you can play a card to stop it from targeting them. Um, out of my way. We have turn structure. Each team takes their turn together by playing the usual four phases. Um, like I said earlier, each player has to go through and finish each phase first. That's where these little extra tokens came from. The green and red, so basically if player one takes their turn first, then they can flip those over. Because you don't have to go, if you're playing, say, uh, three players, on a team, you don't have to go player one, two, three. You can go one, three, two, and then next time go two, one, three. Then third, third turn go three, one, two. Just depends on maybe who has a better advantage. Just as long as each person maybe, and that's the point of the tokens are, so you can flip them, so you know who acted already. Uh, if you're not just gonna always go in turn order, um, and then there's drink orders. Um, if a player in a village of drinks starts around gambling, or each player, um, automatic, the player is automatically chosen as your team's champion. So if you start something, you're a, you're the team's champion. Um, but if something just affects your team, then you have to choose a champion to do it. Um, that champion is basically one good, so you're not competing against each other. So um, an event card will affect all players. Um, wrong to gambling or a player that would affect each player Player chooses one person to basically take take the hit and play cards against it since you share fortitude and everything else It's also saying in that way. It's only hitting one player on your team, but only one player just to react to those um, That's the basis of all of that. There's, there's other little things in there as well um, and I'm not going to get into each one of those but they do have some other little modes because um, you give them a giant page of like, here's how each different player, they have different things that might affect the game. Um, so I'm not going to go over every single one of those. But we do have a two-headed dragon. So it's basically the same as two players. Um, I basically have two different, two players playing multiple players against each other. Um, so... So each, in two-player games, each player is in a two-player team rather than individually. So it's just like a two-versus-two game. Um, then you have the boss battle, which you can play as a boss against a team of two, three, or four. Um, you have different hand sizes and potions versus on the number of players. Um, and this is where the boss adds all their boss cards. Um, the other difference is the boss goes first and it turns it takes usual phases but some different rules. Um, action, they put up the X action cards for X is the number of challengers. Except during the first term, they can only play one. Um, so basically, if there's four people, you get four actions. So then you get to do four things, then it's their turn, they get to do four, four things, but one per player. Um, so that kind of helps you even that out. Um, and the boss is X strength for X is the number of challengers. So that's the order more for each player. Um... Yeah, so other different stuff there. There's also two-headed boss battle, which each plays bosses instead. Um, leaders and lackeys, which is kind of fun. Uh, two, two v two, where um, one player plays as a boss, one player plays as anybody else. Um, and then of course, boss versus boss. If you want to play uh, with the boss extra deck, but then play as with all the extra boss cards. Um, Yeah, so a couple of all the card-specific notes. So just some different stuff there. 
All right, that is what we had for Red Dragon A number six, the villain. So if you're looking for something a little bit different, uh, adding some ex extra components for playing the team versus team, which you could do with any other set without buying them, uh, they just add it. Uh, you want some of the bosses to play as a little bit harder mode or the event deck to add in. This is definitely a great catch to get. Plus, again, there are other sets with other villains. Um, Pub Crawl set number 8 adds the Waitress, the Gorgon, whose name escapes is like Nadia or Nadia, I believe. I might be wrong. Next, something like that. Um, plus, some of the two-player versus packs have a hero and a villain card as well. Um... So you can get some extra characters that way to do so. It's just more than just these four. Um, the only thing I... Last time I want to put the only thing I would hope... It would be kind of neat for me, I mean, me personally if they added just a... Like, expansion pack that was more event cards. It would be definitely cool to get some more different things that could interact with these. Um, plus maybe one for, like, Red Dragon Inn. Like, here's events that might happen at the actual Inn. So, not only could you play the dungeon one, you know, you could play the C one from, uh, that's with Greyport, um, being on the ocean, and then you could also play one of the four Red Dragon Inn, but maybe also adding just a couple extra cards for these. That'd be kind of cool, I, I think. Um, because there's some definitely neat gameplay elements you could add with some of those. Um, alright, see you guys in the next video. Bye!